everyone, I'm back today with a video and it's a biology video and it's the carbon cycle. I literally can't believe I haven't made this video before. Um, someone requested it and then I was like, I must have this video and actually I don't, so sorry about that. Now the carbon cycle is really, really straightforward as long as you always start at the same place. Yes, it's a cycle, but if you start at this one place, everything else will just plop into position and you'll be able to work out exactly what you need. So, literally, let's start with where carbon is. And carbon, carbon is found as carbon dioxide in the air. Now, which organisms use carbon dioxide? Well, that will be green plants that photosynthesize. So your first point will be that plants take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Then your second point is that they use the carbon to make sugars. But the point is, the plants take in carbon to help them grow. So then what happens is the plants respire, as do all living organisms. And remember that the byproduct of respiration is carbon dioxide. So that's the first bit of CO2 being released back into the atmosphere. What else do plants do? Well, they die. And what causes the rotting of the plants? Well, it's microorganisms. So the microorganisms feed on those plants, and guess what? They respire. So there's more CO2 returning to the atmosphere. Next up, the plants might not die straight away. They may be eaten by animals. So the animals will munch on that plant. The carbon in the plant will now become part of the animal's body. And then guess what? The animals respire, so they release CO2 back into the atmosphere. At some point the animals will die and then we know what happens here, we know that the microorganisms will feed on those bodies, um, the carbon will become part of the microorganism and then the microorganism respires again releasing CO2. So as you can see the start of this cycle starts with CO2 being absorbed in photosynthesis and then basically you just need to talk through all the different ways of which CO2 is released back into the atmosphere and that's obviously going to be by respiration. Now there's just a couple of other things you need to be aware of and there's the fact that humans, their activity may also lead to CO2 being released and that's through burning fossil fuels because remember CO2 and water are released as um, products of burning combustion so you could add that point for further mark to say that combustion also releases CO2. So it's a really cyclical thing but just start with CO2 entering the plant by photosynthesis and then if you can't think of anything else just name all the organisms which respire and then on top of that make sure you mention that respiration releases CO2 and that the various organisms eat each other and therefore the carbon becomes part of their bodies and in no time at all you'll have six marks so I promise it's not so hard I will attach some questions at the end of this video and yeah please like my video it makes me really happy um, and it actually spurs me on to make more videos so that's really helpful and I'll see you very soon so here's a classic example of the sort of question you might be asked in a really long shush alarm in a question on the carbon cycle which is worth six marks make sure you use appropriate english here because they will give you a mark for that the diagram shows part of the carbon cycle carbon dioxide in the atmosphere provided by the green plants respiring the animals respiring we've got microorganisms okay so that's a nice little clue as to where our answer is going to go and the question is describe how living things are involved in the constant cycling of carbon as i just said in the video start with carbon dioxide in the air and say as your first point that plants photosynthesize and they take in carbon dioxide in order to do that. Then you want to describe the fact that plants use carbon to make um, anything from carbohydrates to proteins to fats. Remember that green plants respire and that respiration releases carbon dioxide. Some of the plants will be eaten by animals and then those animals which have eaten the plants, remember that they respire too, which will release carbon dioxide. And then lastly, plants and animals both die. And what is it that actually decomposes their bodies? Well, it's the microorganisms. And because microorganisms are also living things, you can also describe their respiration. So maybe just to reiterate quickly, first mark, plants photosynthesize. Second mark, photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide. Third mark, plants use carbon to make carbohydrate. Fourth mark, animals eat green plants. Fifth mark, plants respire. Sixth mark, animals respire. Seventh mark, respiration releases CO2. Eighth mark, plants and animals die. Nine mark, ninth mark, microorganisms decompose the dead bodies. And tenth available mark, microorganisms, microorganisms respire. It is so hard to say that. I don't know why. It's kind of like really, really difficult. But you can definitely see the sorts of things they'd be after there. The diagram shows the carbon cycle. Identify the processes labelled A, B, C, D and E. Don't panic with these questions, just think really clearly and you'll be able to work it out. So let's look at A. So we've got an arrow going from fossil fuels to CO2 in the atmosphere. Right, the only thing you can really do to a fossil fuel is burn it. So for A you need to write burning, or if you're feeling fancy you need to write combustion. 
Okay, looking at ROB, it's going from green plants to CO2 in the atmosphere. So at this point, the green plants are releasing CO2. And how they do that is by respiration. So that's B. C. CO2 in the atmosphere and dissolved in water. Okay, so the arrow is going from that label to green plants. So it means that the green plants are absorbing CO2. Well, how do they do that? Well, it's by photosynthesis. So that's the answer to C. And then D, where's that going? Okay, it's from animals to dead material, right? All that they're doing there is rotting. So you can write rotting or decay or decomposition or death. Any of those words is absolutely fine. And then lastly, E. Okay, there's an arrow pointing from animals to CO2 in the atmosphere again. Right, that's respiration again. So not so bad. Part two, give the letter of the process that reduces the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Right, it's the process which takes in CO2, so that's going to have to be the plants photosynthesizing. So remember which one that one, that was C. So make sure you state the letter rather than writing photosynthesis. B, an increase in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can lead to an enhanced greenhouse effect. Describe the possible consequences of an enhanced greenhouse effect. Right, all you geographers should love this question. Remember that the greenhouse effect leads to global warming. And then therefore, if the temperatures rise, what you find is the polar ice caps will melt. Because they've melted, it means that there'll be a rise in sea level, leading to flooding. And then if you're feeling jazzy, you can write that that will lead to habitat destruction or extinction of species. So first mark, global warming. Second mark, polar ice caps melt. Third mark, leading to rise in sea level. Fourth mark, habitat destruction. So not so bad there. Oh, why do I always do that? Okay, somehow I've touched something and it's gone funny. Just to read you the next question. The next question was suggest two ways to reduce the buildup of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Right, what you could say here is plant more trees because obviously they'll absorb some of the carbon dioxide. Or you could say um, reduce the amount of cattle because remember when cattle fart and burp, that sounds so gross, they release a lot of methane which is a greenhouse gas. So if you reduce cattle farming then you'll help the greenhouse effect. Good. Thank you.